Hello everybody, my name is Elona Poyani and I am a lecturer at the Faculty of Economy, University of Tirana. Today I'm going to talk about uh, education and its relationship to the field of disaster risk management. I'm going to focus especially on these topics in Albania and the Balkans. Here is shown an outline of my presentation. As you may see, after discussing education and disaster risk management, I'm going to talk briefly also about research in the field of disaster risk management. This is a map of the world as we know it. I'm going to show in the next slides some other views of our world with other shapes, emphasizing different aspects of it. This is a map that shows how our world would look like if it was shaped according to the GDPs of different countries. You can see a larger Europe, a smaller Africa and of course a big China and India. Here is a map of the world based on population. Again the shapes differ from what we are used to see. And here is one of the most shocking representations of our world. This is a map based on inequality and absolute poverty. It looks very different from what we are used to see. And now let's go back to disasters and some representations of maps related to different aspects of a disaster event. I want you to remember the last map we saw about inequality and absolute poverty and try to relate to some of these representations. As you can see, if we talk about uh, total number of storms, and I am here showing the first map, top left uh, of the slide, we see that our world is not much different from what we are used to see. It is actually known that disasters doesn't choose where they hit. They can hit any country in the world, either a developed country or a developing one. But when we talk about injuries, about damage, about physical damage, especially about, about casualties uh, that occur after a disaster, then the ma maps uh, show a much different uh, view. You see uh, the first map top right of the slide which shows storm injured, people injured from storms and I think you can uh, relate or you can see the uh, resemblance of this map with the previous one. So when we talk about injuries, uh, physical damages uh, of people and uh, uh, casualties, we see a world where uh, disasters hit mostly the poorer country. You see a similar situation uh, in the bottom left map uh, where are shown the people left homeless after a storm. So the storm can hit also the US, can hit also Europe, but uh, damages caused to families, to households, to uh, people themselves are less uh, frequent in developed countries and much more frequent in developing and poorer countries. And finally the bottom right map show the absolute value of damages and this is the, uh, very uh, obvious that of course damages in absolute terms uh, in monetary terms are much higher in developed countries because in these countries uh, the costs uh, are much higher so uh, the cost of, of reconstruction of buildings damage from them will of course be also higher compared to uh, developing countries and quite shocking these two maps the first showing earthquake risk which is quite high in many countries of the world, either developed or developing ones. And on the right, you see earthquake deaths. And you see how much inequality is. 
And now let's see how, how all that we talked about relates to education. Uh, in fact, when a disaster hit a country, it hits very much the education system. And it hits it on two sides, both on the supply side and also on the demand side. When ta we talk about supply, we talk about provision of education. And we talk about the fact that when a disaster hit a country, uh, what we would expect, especially if it is a serious disaster, is that education is interrupted. Then, uh, so the interruption is the first uh, supply side challenge that uh, arises. Uh, when a disaster hit a country. But then uh, we have to talk about security. So uh, people, students and teachers involved in the education system, I involved in the process of, process of teaching and learning, are uh, challenged or their security is jeopardized when a disaster uh, hits a country, region, uh, town. Uh, so in that case, uh, this is another uh, challenge that has to be uh, bared by the education system. And finally, enrollment, which is also related to the two previous topics I just mentioned. Uh, when a disaster hit a country, uh, it might cause a direct effect to the rate of enrollment of students in the education system. Why? Because after an event, it might be the case that many students are forced to go out of school, either because the school is damaged, so this is related to uh, the interruption that I talked before, but also because they might be requested at home uh, to help their families cope with the post-disaster challenges, with the post-disaster reconstruction phase. And uh, in that case, they wa might want to go to school, and the school might have been uh, put in... Um, in functioning again, but they cannot enroll, they cannot attend anymore, uh, is exactly because they need to help their families. These challenges are especially frequent in poorer countries. So in those countries where inequality levels are higher and where disaster consequences are much more harder to bear. Uh, in such countries, the challenges of the education system are also much more serious and the way to cope uh, with them becomes extremely difficult. Now let's address the other side, the demand side challenges. The fact that disaster hit countries, the fact that the disasters have consequences, uh, bring to the question, the topic of education. So how are our education responds to such challenges that the country faces? Uh, so in this situation, in such circumstances, is the education system that should respond by improving, revising, offering more uh, education programs which address such challenges that are faced by the population. So in this case, uh, what uh, the demand side challenges of uh, the education system are in case of disaster include improving disaster risk and climate change literacy, addressing teaching and learning methodologies by improving and uh, uh, implementing new uh, methodologies which uh, contribute to critical thinking of students because these students will be the decision makers of the future and as such they need to be offered an education that enables them to solve problems in the future. And also the universities themselves, the administration, uh, have to think about how to make university services more sustainable and in many cases more greener. In the field called Education for Sustainable Development, such issues are very important to be addressed and the final purpose of this kind of education is firstly to increase the adaptive capacities in case of disasters and secondly to maintain development action into the education system. And now let's talk about disaster risk management education in the Western Balkans. The Western Balkan countries share a communist past which various extents continues to affect their higher education systems. 
However, in the post-communist area, higher education curricula have been heavily revised to incorporate the principles set forth in the Bologna process. Also, entirely new courses have been devised. The European Union has supported the higher education sector in the region through a broad range of projects and financing schemes, and most countries have reciprocated by willing to embrace Western education practices, such as multidisciplinarity or interdisciplinarity approaches. In fact, sustainable development education is becoming increasingly popular in the EU. Uh, and the study conducted in the framework of the k Force project in 2017 identified that the content of the master programs in risk management in the EU and UK is diverse with more than 100 risk education programs. These programs are, m in most of the cases, interdisciplinary and combine teachings of the field as well as aspects of economics, risk assessment, financing, insurance, etc. However, this path is still a way to go for the Balkan region, including Albania. With the exception of Greece, few countries in the Western Balkans have operationalized the concept of interdisciplinarity in the higher education. There are many reasons for this, which include uh, cultural inflexibility, the traditional education system and the generally restricted labor market, and these are uh, the main barriers uh, for the implementation of such programs of studies in higher education. However, while bachelor programs in Western Balkan tend to be more traditional in terms of content and focus, postgraduate programs are making a concerned to diversify their contacts. The creation of master programs that straddle across faculties is the evidence of that. Here is shown a summary of programs of studies in the field of disaster risk management offered in the countries of the Western Balkan region. And now I will focus on Albania and how all the topics uh, are related to this country. Albania has a high exposure to natural disasters, either disasters from natural causes, anthropogenic causes or other kinds uh, of uh, disasters. In fact, Albania ranks 21st in the world in terms of vulnerability to landslides, uh, 43rd in terms of earthquake and 58th in terms of drought risk. This table shows different kinds of disasters that may hit the country and their uh, related frequency or probability of occurrence. And in this table, some of the most devastating disasters in terms of casualties that have hit Albania are summarized. And going back to a very recent period, on November 26 of 2019, a devastating earthquake hit Albania, uh, very close to the capital, Tirana. It left extensive damages in 11 municipalities. Here are some figures of the damages, also in terms, in monetary terms. It is considered the strongest earthquake in the last 30 years. The earthquake left a lot of consequences to the education sector. A total of 321 education institutions, representing 24% of all educational establishments, were hit or damaged because of the earthquake, most of which were located in Tirana and Douros. Uh, the losses in monetary terms were valued at 8.76 million euros, and the recovery cost is uh, estimated to be about 95 million euros, or uh, nearly 9% of the total recovery cost. It was emphasized that uh, Albania was not prepared for such an event. This is an extract of the report of the IFRC uh, done after uh, the event, which um, 
states that the existing governmental and contingency plans in Albania were activated right after the earthquake, but they were proven to be incomprehensive and not appropriately implementable. There is a need to update the contingency plan as part of the institutional preparedness and review and scale up community-based DRR activities. This was the statement from the report which uh, states that activities, methodologies uh, and uh, measures taken at community and household level were insufficient and, nor and not adequate uh, in that event. Therefore, the challenges and needs that were emphasized uh, reflect the need for professionals trained in the field of disaster risk management, a need for awareness rising, need for sustainable building design and need for international assistance. And now let's focus on the demand side of education and uh, to try to give an answer on how the education system have responded to such challenges that the country faces. In fact, such response has been scarred because until 2018 there were no university programs focused on disaster risk management in Albania. There were some programs related to the field of environmental engineering and earthquake engineering offered by the Polytechnic uh, University, which partly uh, have uh, a relationship to the field of disaster uh, risk management. But in 2017 the University of Tirana starting the application for a new master program which uh, officially started in 2018 called Master of Science in Risk Management which was a product of an international cooperation developed in the framework of the K-Force project under the Erasmus Plus program. This program of studies was interdisciplinary. Uh, it had uh, topics uh, among three disciplines, enterprise risk management, financial risk management and disaster risk management. Its uniqueness uh, made it the first program of study of this nature in Albania. The development of curricula of this program of study was based on a wide market study that was conducted uh, by the University of Tirana before its implementation. This market study was based on student surveys uh, on um, desk research on similar programs offered uh, in EU and on interviews uh, made with um, relevant stakeholders uh, in Albania, such as the Regional Environmental Center, the General Directorate of Civil Emergencies in Albania, Ministry of Agriculture and Water Administration uh, and other uh, important national and, national and international institutions in the country. The program offers a lot of novelty uh, in its content and also in its methodology. It addresses three new courses which were for the first time implemented in a university uh, in Albania. These three courses are disaster risk management, climate change adaptation and disaster risk modeling. Moreover, uh, it um, experimented with new teaching methodologies, especially uh, on student-based uh, learning methodology, was used in uh, delivering many of the topics of the, um, of the master program. Uh, now, this master program has uh, graduated its first generation of students and is continuing uh, being offered in the University of Tirana. Finally, I'm going to briefly address the research in the field of disaster risk management. As this part is also related to the education system, as research is, is offered by students, is a uh, product of student work, of uh, uh, teachers' uh, work, and of researchers uh, affiliated with universities. Uh, these are some uh, main uh, topics or main questions when we think about research. Firstly, we need to define research. Uh, we need to uh, identify our own philo philosophy of research and then uh, choose the type of research that we want uh, to conduct. 
we need to choose the methods we are going to use uh, and then the strategy that is applied in our research. This is common, uh, these are common questions among all type of research and uh, a researcher or which is uh, engaged in the field of disaster risk management has to solve uh, these um, uh, questions before uh, starting to think about uh, topics or the way he is going to uh, deliver a research in the field of disaster risk management. In fact, the research in this field is not uh, rather that simple and uh, it is actually also a new field of uh, studies uh, and research and that such many types of uh, research activities have been used in order to solve different research questions. Um, many uh, researchers choose have chosen qualitative approaches over quantitative approaches because in many countries it's very difficult actually to find data especially in developing and in poorer countries is uh, a problem of missing data or uh, inaccurate data uh, which uh, can then be used for a research uh, process that's why uh, most researchers uh, like or prefer qualitative approaches to deliver education in the field of disaster risk management there is a preference for positivism opposed to interpretivism uh, philosophy uh, there is uh, data collection which includes uh, very much the interviews uh, because of the qualitative nature of uh, research uh, but also questionnaires and field observation are commonly used in research in the field uh, case study research is particularly common uh, in the field of disaster risk management because uh, it's easier or it's very valuable to study the effects and consequences of a study area of a region, of a, a town, of a village that has been affected, uh, has been hit by a disaster and uh, to study the consequences in such small-scale uh, areas. Uh, anyhow, no trends in the research activities has yet been identified uh, because the research is in the field of disaster risk management is still in evolution. But there is a quite wide diapason of choices and strategies that a researcher can embrace uh, when choosing the disaster risk management field for uh, his research purposes. Uh, he can choose between uh, qualitative or quantitative uh, methods, multi or mixed methods. Uh, he can choose a research strategy based on surveys, case studies or other. Uh, he can choose the methods of data collection. Uh, he has the opportunity to do research in a multidisciplinary field. Um, he can study this way technical impact, economic impact, he can study behavior, he can study at local level, regional level, or he can do research at international level. Um, he can produce many research outputs, he can produce recommendations, he can influence public policies and risk communication through his research. So uh, it is actually a rather important uh, field for uh, research and um, uh, it should be embraced by, by our students and uh, by young researchers uh, in order to give a valuable contribution to, to, this, uh, to the field and to the policies uh, and actions uh, by governments, uh, local or, or central ones. Concluding my presentation, I want to thank you all for your attention.